Well, greetings, folks. Louis D. Sienna here with you. We're going to talk about callings versus titles today. And I really want to talk about this topic. I've done it many times, but I really want to exhort those of you who uh, are in the body of Christ to uh, absolutely become your best, whatever uh, the path that God has you on uh, before him. So let's talk about this. So before we do that, I want to invite you to follow me at lewisdcn.com. Go to our website. I've bunch of stuff on there. I have uh, nine course ratings that I've done, GSS 1 through 9. I'm doing number 10 now. Uh, I do a, a weekly mentorship uh, thing also starting July 11th. I'll be doing that again. Uh, plus, you can find me in the Gate Church on Rumble. You can find us on uh, Facebook, YouTube, and you can download the Gate Church of Jacksonville app. And you could get all these messages will be right there as well. Now, one of the things I want to talk about is you see, I sometimes see people uh, call fivefold ministry things titles. And then that really, that really vexes my soul because I know what they're saying. I know the frustration that they might be finding. And so I want to address some of these things in my experience, in my own callings in God and how he has called me and how I didn't always like it. It wasn't something I wanted, and it was something I had to wrestle with in God to uh, fulfill and to bring about because I never saw myself in that light. So, um, you know, Paul writes this in Romans 1 1. He says this Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. Now, what I'm not going to do here is break down the fivefold ministry callings. It's not what I'm going to do here. I just want to deal with that fivefold ministry calling, why we struggle with it. So if you're called to be a deacon and you're chosen to be a deacon, an elder or a bishop, these are things, these are positions in the church to oversee the church and help the church. They are positions that you grow into. And we need to understand that's different. Those are actually titles. But they're positions that you grow up into uh, as you grow. You start out as a deacon. You might be an elder over a church. You might be an elder over a bigger church. And then if you're put over several churches, you would be a bishop, an overseer. And this is something that should be done at 20. Sometimes I see bishops at 20 and I'm going, no. And, and they take on that title. And I, I don't think that's correct either, by the way. Okay. Remember, Paul instructed Timothy and those to appoint uh, bishops and elders and stuff like that in the church to help those in the call of God to fulfill their mission. Now, all of these are important and all of these are of God. And I think what happens to us is um, we want recognition from men. And, and this is something you have to avoid in the kingdom. Um, they didn't always recognize Paul. They certainly didn't always recognize Jesus. And, and I, I've seen some people go from a uh, prophet to apostle in like six months. And they, they, they were ordained a prophet. Now they're an apostle. And that's a little hokey to me. Um, and I'll explain why. You know, when I, when I, about 15 years ago, I had a gentleman in my church that no matter what I spoke on, no matter what I taught on in the church and spoke on in the church, he would come in my office and declare, yes, God called me to that. And it was, it, he didn't know how to discern the voice of the Lord. He didn't know which way was up. And by the way, I don't think he's ever gotten into ministry because he could never, ever just get himself to sit with the Lord. I believe we're all called. So I want you to know that. Me and you are called. I don't believe there's one person, you're going to see this in here. I don't believe one person in here is called to sit and do nothing. I don't believe that. I, I, even those, even those that are in business, you say, "Well, I'm not called to ministry." That's actually wrong. We're going to get into that. But what I want you to see is that how do we handle this uh, in the church, and what is our problem today? You know, I, I'm reminded of Paul. Of, of sorry, Moses, um, when he takes the seventy, and. Joshua gets jealous because two of the 70 are still in the city square, let's say, and they start prophesying and Joshua wants them to stop. And Moses says, are you jealous for my sake? I wish all God's people were prophets. Isn't that a stunning statement? They're not all prophets. We're going to get into that. But I think sometimes that 
the church wants less instead of abundance. And we get threatened by other people trying to bring up their calling. Now, here's our problem in our callings today. We have the internet. The internet is, is a place where self-promotion is most evident. We don't, you know, it's, it's, we're trying to get our voice out there. We're trying, we got to have a website. We got to do a podcast. We got to do a YouTube. We got to do, and I do all those things. Don't get me wrong. And we're trying to get, you know, whatever. And we're, as if you were in church and you got up and you try to convince somebody and you were promoting yourself from the pulpit, it would be a little icky, but somehow it works on the internet. And I don't believe so, but what do we do with now let me tell you the difference of a calling okay and a title those that are looking to have the title of an apostle of a prophet and those are the two that i think are the most evident here because it's pretty hard to call yourself of a pastor because we don't view a pastor properly we view a pastor only if he's the leader of a church and that's actually wrong, by the way. Those were elders, and those were those who assisted with the church. You know, they helped. And, and, and there was never like one pastor over a church. They had elders at the church. And so we've kind of morphed into something different. We actually understand the evangelist, one who goes out and wins souls. He's called, but here's the difference about an evangelist and someone who wins souls. I love winning souls. <clears throat> but there's a couple people that I've been amazed that no more, let's say like Reinhard Bonnke. That's easy. But just guys I look up to and guys I'm friends with and guys I admire. Todd Bentley. His ability to lead thousands to Christ, a 10,000 meeting and lead, you know, 4,000 to Christ in a meeting is a gift and anointing I don't carry. I just don't carry that. Um, Charlie Champ, Jeff Jansen, when he was with us, could do that. It's not my calling. And I I recognize that. I'm not jealous of it in a way because it's not my calling. So it's not mine. It's not what God's called me to do. So I'm not jealous for it. But as Todd will tell you, I love helping out. So I'll go to the streets with them. I, and I pray for the sick, see them healed. I do my job. But I'm not... Um, I would, I'm not a five-fold evangelist, and I do not try to, to, to do that. If I was to call myself an evangelist because I was doing a crusade, that in itself would be a title to me, because I'm not called. God's never spoken to me and said, you're called to be an evangelist, okay? And so sometimes we want to be an apostle because we think apostle will give us power. We think, if I call myself a prophet, I'll get more words. If I call myself, uh, you know, uh, whatever, right? Well, that's not how callings work. Callings work because God has met you and Jesus has placed upon you a grace for that. Now, with all graces, all the grace of God, you have to learn to walk in it. So we're a bishop has someone who has come up through the ranks of maturity and a walk that everyone has seen, and they could look and go, hey, you know, we appoint you as bishop over this region because we have seen your maturity. You know how to handle situations. You have the wisdom of the Lord. You have a solid family. These are all things, okay, that we would say you're qualified to be a bishop. But you know what's not a qualification? There's no qualification to be a prophet. There's no qualification to be an apostle. Because God called Peter as an apostle. He called all 12 of them as an apostle. And one of them that you're going to have to really deal with was Judas. And so what you have to understand is the grace was given to them to be an apostle. Eleven fulfilled it, walked it out, and one didn't. And so... When it comes to callings, we grow in our calling. We're still an apostle. Okay? We're still an apostle. When I was ordained as a prophet in 2002, um, 
I wasn't allowed to call myself a prophet until that moment, until I was ordained. That was my spiritual father. And I believe in that, by the way. I think I think if you're going to be a prophet and apostle, and the reason I say these two is because these are the foundation ministries. And I, and I think you need to understand that um, they hold so much weight that I don't believe my buddy over there who I've been in, you know, I have a, you know, a prayer partner and they read a book and they go, hey, you know, I think you're an apostle. I, I think it needs to be conferred upon you by others. And so when I was being ordained as a prophet by my spiritual father, Randy Lester and Apostle Greg Rayleigh and others, other prophets and apostles were in the thing. They called out being an apostle and I was not happy with that. And I knew it wasn't instant and call myself an apostle. I didn't do anything like that, but I was now a prophet. And I knew I could reject that apostle calling. I could actually reject it and say, no, I'm not going down that road. By the way, I, I, I could go through, I've done this before. I could go why I was just, did not want to be called that. And the reason was, is we still, because it's just, I mean, just calling yourself a prophet is enough to get the crap kicked out of you. You know, uh, prophets and apostles get stoned. <laughs> you know, they do. They just do. You know, religious and political spirits love to attack the apostles and prophets. So, um, and so, um, and I and I started meditating, and then I started getting these words. You're called to be an apostle, called to be an apostle, called to be an apostle. And I'm I literally, I'm not going to go through this whole thing. I literally spent four plus years in prayer with the Lord asking, what should I do? Who do I, you know, and waiting because I knew someone was going to have to lay their hands on for this. I knew, listen to me, I knew that somebody, an apostle, would have to lay their hands on me. I'm going to tell you this story. <clears throat> I didn't know Bill Johnson. December 2006, some of my spiritual daughters were at a meeting up in Grace of Avondale. I think it is Grace, no, Grace, I'm sorry, Grace Church of Franklin, Tennessee. And, and just outside Nashville, wonderful church, wonderful people. And they heard this man called Bill Johnson. I had just been teaching him for three years about the kingdom and everything. And they said, oh my God, he, you know, I'm not Bill Johnson, so don't get me wrong. He said, but some of the things you taught us, he was teaching. You really got to, you got to get to know this, this gentleman. And the Lord spoke to me when they said, this is four and a half years, five years into this, my journey. And, and the Lord speaks to me and he goes, uh, you're to go to him, have him lay hands on you for your apostolic calling. Now, I don't know Bill's an apostle. Matter of fact, in Bill's book, Heaven Invades Earth, I don't think it, I, I don't believe it mentioned that at all. I know I got a couple copies up here. He didn't mention that at all about being an apostle. Not at all. Okay? And I wasn't about to call myself that. Matter of fact, even after Bill laid hands on me, it took me several... By the way, I don't call myself an apostle. Let me, let me explain that in a second. So I called out to Bethel. I found the Bill's going to be in Webb, Alabama. I called out to Bethel. I, I got Judy Franklin's... Uh, email and I emailed her and I said, Judy, um, my name is Louis D. Santa. I'm a minister in Jacksonville, Florida. If I come to Webb, Alabama, would Bill Johnson lay hands on me? Uh, is that something he would do? And, you know, to my amazement, three hours later, Judy got back to me and said, I've talked to Bill. And he said, absolutely. He will not give you any personal time. There won't be any time for you to have coffee or anything because he's giving himself to the to the leaders there. I was fine with me. That's not what the Lord didn't tell me to have coffee with him. The Lord told me to have lay hands on me. And so I decided to take seven people with me. And walking up the stairs on that Sunday morning, January 7, 2007, the Lord, Holy Spirit spoke to me walking up there. And he said to me, you must receive the apostle in the name of the apostle. Now, I didn't. No Bill is an apostle except but by the Spirit. I didn't know Bill's ministry. Listen, I didn't know Bill's ministry. I'd never been in a meeting. I saw his picture on a cover, you know, a little picture on the side. That's all I, I, I didn't, I, I'm not a real good, I, I was obeying the voice of the Lord. I wasn't, I wasn't going to go, well, if he seems fit, then I'll go do it. I, I didn't know who he was. Didn't know his ministry at all. 
And this is 2007, so most people didn't know his ministry, especially on the East Coast. And I, I went in and I, and I said this to the Holy Spirit. In Bill's book, Heaven Invades Earth, he said, Randy Clark laid hands on him five times. I want Bill to lay hands on me five times then as a confirmation. And I walked in the double doors of the church. They were doing morning Bible study before the first service. It was Sunday morning. And the doors closed behind me, and I heard, let us pray. And I just stopped right there at the double doors inside and bowed my head. And this hand came over as the pastor was praying. This hand came over and put his hand on me and began to pray for me. And he, he began to say these things to me. Lord, everything this man came here to get this week, I pray he gets. I pray you touch him. I pray that everything he came to receive, he receives and more. I ask that you bless him. He just started praying for me. And I didn't have glasses back then. I'm looking out of the corner of my eye. And it's Bill Johnson. And I'm kind of rocked because this is happening. You know, I just said this literally, I mean, 30 seconds, 40 seconds earlier, I already got one. And... I went up, put our stuff up in the balcony, and I came back down to introduce myself to Bill and told him who I was. I was that minister from Jacksonville. Bill said, look, we're gonna lay, I'm going to lay hands on you. I don't know when. I said, that's okay. I'm just hungry, Bill. I mean, I was so hungry, folks. It was, it was, it was like death in me. Like, I was hungry so much. You know what I mean? It was like, if it doesn't happen, I'm, I'm going to die. And Bill late prayed for me again. And I got 10 feet away from Bill and the Spirit of the Lord fell on me. And the Spirit of the Lord was on me like this intensely for three days. I mean, intensely fire electricity for three days. And I, I'll tell more of this story another time because this isn't about me. But God, Jesus met me. You know what I mean? It's like, and so basically, uh, by the way, Sunday morning, Sunday night, uh Monday morning, Monday night, Tuesday morning. I've gone to Bill each time. Each time he's prayed for me before the meeting. And Tuesday he prays. He says, we're going to do a fire tunnel this morning. And I go last because I know I'm getting, I'm not there just to get a touch. I mean, I'm, I, I, and Bill stands in front of me. And he takes about a minute, minute and a half just to lay his hands on me and pray on me. And, you know, you'd wonder, you, you know, now look, I got wrecked. So I knew I got something, but. It's that, that's, and that's all I needed, by the way. I didn't need any confirmation outside. It's nice when you get it, but I didn't need it. But I had people with me. Oh my God, when Bill's laying hands on you, I saw angels coming. They were dumping oil, you know, all this great stuff. And it's great. And I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to make this about me. I want to just tell you the difference between of calling and titles. One of his students comes up to me on Tuesday night and prophesies over me. She doesn't know me. Her name is Diana. I got her in my phone to this day. And um, it was, she was a student and she prayed over me. And um, she prayed over me and said to me, that the Lord, she goes, the Lord, the Lord wants you to know that you came here today to receive your apostolic anointing. And the Lord says you have received it for a city, a region, and the world. Now, you might, you don't have to believe that, by the way. You don't have to believe that. You can shun that or you want. That's not going to change me at all. I think that what most people do at that point is they want to put apostle on their card. You know, I didn't do that. Matter of fact, I'll go into a nurse story where I struggled between that prophet and apostolic calling. Okay, I struggled with it. And that's for another day and how the, what the Lord did because I've had several encounters with the Lord. All right. And look, this has been confirmed over me from, you know, ministry at Bethel to, I'll give you a great story the first time I met Jeff Jansen. And me and Jeff, I picked him up at the airport. We're at the worship. And Jeff looks over at me and he goes, you're an apostle. And I just smiled, yes. He goes, wow, I just saw that on you. Well, the reason Jeff didn't know that, because I didn't introduce myself when I picked him. He didn't know me. I picked him up at the airport to the conference because I had something I want to talk to him about. 
Uh, we both had similar words about something, and I just want to ask him some questions. So I asked if I could pick him up at the airport, and I did. And I introduced myself, not as Apostle Lewis, but as, hey, Jeff, my name's Lewis, DCN, glad to meet you, I'm your ride. So I introduced myself. I, didn't, I don't introduce myself as Apostle Lewis. I'm Lewis. That's my name. It's it, My name is not Apostle Lewis. My name is Lewis. I say Apostle for the religious spirits. Like I'll sometimes throw that in there. Just People ask all the time, what should I call you? Lewis. Now, if you need to call me Pastor, Apostle, whatever helps you so that you don't de decrease honor, so you keep yourself in the right place with God, do it. What do I call Bill? I've never called Bill Apostle, even though he's an Apostle. He knows I know he's an Apostle. Um, I call Bill Sir. I call him Bill. I call him Friend. <laughs> but mostly I call him Sir, and I love him to death. And, you know, we've built a relationship over 15 years. And I went out to Bethel for, I think it was 12 times in the first uh, six years. Why did I go out there? I went out there. And I went to conferences with Bill. Why? Because I wanted to learn under the anointing with them how to move in the anointing, how to move in that apostolic anointing. And by the way, I, I had someone at his church in the presbytery go, oh my God, I see the mantle that's on Bill on you. I'm not Bill Johnson, don't get me wrong. That isn't to say I'm Bill Johnson. I'm, I, my ministry is not like as big as Bill's and all that. That's all I'm saying. What God was doing was honoring the one who prayed for me. That wasn't honor to me. That was honor to the one. It's just like, Elijah's mantle being upon Elisha. It's honor to the one who walks it out and is able to impart. It's not honor to me. They were that that, that phrase didn't go to me. What it did to me is is affirm and confirm and um, uh, reinforce my honor, respect for Bill Johnson and for what he gave me. And I, by the way, Bill knows this. Um, I steward what he's given me. I go, I do have miracles, healings, um, and and signs. And I've had signs, wonders. We've had gold dust, feathers, diamonds, all that stuff. I'm not bragging on that. That's God. And, you know, that's that's not what this is about. So please, I'm just telling you, if you're called by God, you know, here's, here's what I want to tell you. If you're called by God like that, you have this encounter with God and all that, you don't have to promote yourself. And listen to me, no one can take it away. No one can take away your calling. Nobody. It's without repentance. God has called you. He's put his hand upon you. Now you can unfulfill it. But that doesn't mean God took it away. It just means you weren't faithful with it. And this is where you have to be faithful with what is given to you. All right. So that's important for us to understand. Now you got the person who just wants to promote themselves or they're prophetic and they call they think being they this is what they think they i prophesy so i'm a prophet no that is not a prophet you pray for the sick and they get healed that doesn't make you an apostle evangelists pray for the sick and get healed i prayed for the sick and they got healed when i was a prophet that is that is not what fivefold callings or governmental positions all of us should heal the sick. All of us should prophesy. All of us should have the have ministry. All right, we'll get to that. Okay, now. So, but I want to teach you how to carry that out. You have to understand when you're called, whether it be as a prophet, whether it be as a teacher, whether it be as a pastor, you're going to grow in your maturity, in that gift. You're going to learn how to walk out that grace. And the, look, at Bill's been an apostle for 20 years, but Bill is not the same guy he was when he went to Bethel. He's the same guy, but he's not. I've got tapes from when he first went there. He talks differently. There's more assurance in his walk. I mean, he would say he's grown. If he hasn't grown, then that's just not good, right? We grow in the grace given to us. Okay. And this is important to understand because I feel that we fight this a lot. All right. And I want you to walk that out so you are beneficial, okay, extremely beneficial to the church and filling out your calling. Now, if you're trying to think, because I'm going to call myself, it's not going to work. The anointing doesn't come with the title, okay? It doesn't work. And some, some, so listen, I, I, this is what I wrote down here. 
Some desire to be what they have not been called to. Okay, they, they desire that. They, they, others desire to be called. And they want people to fear their calling. Why others fear the Lord in their calling. I would dare not call myself something the Lord hasn't called me. But, you know, I, and I won't defend it to anybody. Paul actually says he's boasting when he has to defend himself. So it's not good to do that. And I know, I know people who move. Like, let me, I'll tell you this story at the end. But sometimes you move in, a, in an area and you think that makes you that. And that doesn't that. Bill once stood next to a prophet and prophesied for two hours with the man because he was using his anointing, his, his gifting. And Bill stood underneath it. Bill can prophesy, but Bill's not a prophet. He doesn't go, I'm going to change my ministry now. Now, let's talk about the callings, okay? Fivefold ministries are an extension of Jesus to the body. The ministries given to the church, these are found, by the way, in Ephesians 4, but you also have other ministries found in Romans 12. And these are ministries, and we're going to get into this. But to each one of us, grace is given according to the measure of Christ's gift. So Christ gives us ministries. And we're going to show, I'm going to show you this in Scripture. Christ is the one who gives us ministries. Holy Spirit's the one who gives us gifts. And you have to know the difference, okay? But to each one, to each one of us, grace is given to us. Ephesians 4.11 says, And he himself, he's given everybody, listen to, each one has been given a measure of Christ's gift. Every one of us has a ministry. Every one of us has a ministry. Say that with me. Every one of us has a ministry. I'm going to show you a scripture on that in just a second. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastor and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. He didn't give everyone a fivefold gift. He gave everyone ministries, but he gave some to be apostles and some to be prophets and some to be evangelists. Okay, now where are there other ministries? Well, Romans 12, 6 says, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. And he who teaches teaching, and he who exhorts in exhortation, and he who gives with liberty, liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. There are ministries along with gifts in this thing. There are people who have a ministry of hospitality. You know the people. You know the people. Not all have a five-fold ministry, but all have a ministry. Let's get into this. 1 Corinthians 12, 28 says this, And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then the gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet I show you a more excellent way. Okay, so not all are apostles. Can't have, We don't have 7 billion apostles. By the way, we've got to start honoring really, really good fivefold pastors. I have two pastors that I've raised up. They're the, they pastor. I father, but they pastor. And that's Jerry and Denise Grubb. They are fivefold pastors. I have my wife and Margaret Burke and others are prophets in my church. I have other ministers in my church. I have an evangelist in my you know, now that just came out of my church. So, so my point being this is that honor the gifts, honor the one who can prophesy. I have one, one gentleman who's so prophetic. He's such an amazing, tender soul. And but he's not ordained. Maybe someday we'll see. But he's, you know, we honor that gift. I have an elder and Sam. By the way, both those people are Sam. Samuel and Samuel. And Sammy, the, our elder, has such a, a prophetic gift. We honor him. After we pulled it out of it. 
gave them place to pull it out. And we need to understand that if we're going to understand. I know there's those out there. Look, we have a problem. We might see a young person calling himself an apostle. Now, here's the thing I want to warn you about. Do not discredit that person because they're not in the fullness of their gift yet. Be careful. You do not have the right. Now, what you have to have, you could test to see if they're apostles. They might just be at the beginning of their journey. And they might be a little bit uh, um, early in the pronunciation of it because they don't know how to process it. They had a, they had a <coughs> encounter with the Lord. And even though they, ha they haven't gone through the process yet with God, Right. And, and they they're jumping the gun. That might be true. But, you know, we have to find a way to really discern that. OK, to really discern. Hey, and by the way, if if they're not in your sphere of influence, then to be honest with you, why do you have to speak against them in a sense? Like, you know, just let it go. Jeez, save us all a problem. All right. Um. So, but let's understand how the Spirit, how Jesus and the Father work together when it comes to our gifting. Now, I'm going to read this out of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians, no, 1 Corinthians 12. We're going to read this. And then I'm going to show us where we all have a ministry. All right. So, this is out of the Passion Translation. And I'm reading it here. And um, we're just going to start down there. Uh, at verse 3. Therefore, I want to impart to you an understanding of the following. No one speaking by the Spirit of God would ever say Jesus is a curse. It didn't say that someone with the Spirit can't say that. It says you wouldn't be speaking by the Spirit when you said that. Okay? Under that. Now. now, I don't think anyone who's full of God would ever say that, right? No one can say Jesus is the Lord Yahweh unless the Holy Spirit is speaking through him. No one can call Jesus Lord unless the Spirit, number one, it says the Father has to reveal Jesus, and it is by the Spirit we actually call him Lord. You might think it's by your brain, but it's not. It is by the Spirit. It is the same Holy Spirit who continues, look at, no one calls him Jesus except by the Spirit, and it's the same Spirit that continues to destroy Distribute many different varieties of gifts. It is the Lord Yahweh is the Lord Yahweh is one, and He is the one who apportions to believers different varieties of ministries. Holy Spirit gives gifts. Holy Spirit gives gifts. Jesus gives ministries. Put my hands on the screen. Gifts, ministries. Jesus doesn't give gifts that way of gifts of the Spirit. He, do, he gives gifts of ministries. His things are ministries. So you have the ministry of where the Holy Spirit can move on me in a moment to give a tongue or get an interpretation of a tongue. Understand that? That would be the Holy Spirit. But my ministry, I'm not talking about my organizational ministry. I'm talking about I was in Italy. I was in Boston. My ministry is given to me by Jesus. I, I saw miracles and healing in both places. And I also prophesied. I had to learn how to do both. You know, like I, I'll talk about that some other time. But I, I did both. I, I taught in the prophetic one night and ministered impartation prophetically to everyone, both places. And then the, the second night, I did miracles and healings. Okay. And they and I I don't testify that they're healed. They do. <laughs> I I don't I don't bother with that. All right. So, listen to this. It's the same God distributes different kinds of miracles that accomplish different results through each believer's gift and ministry as he energizes and activates them. Isn't that amazing? So you see Father or Jesus in the spirit of distributing. The Father is actually the one distributing miracles. So good. It's so good. 
Okay? Um, and different results for each believer's gift of ministry as he energizes and activates them. Each believer is given continuous revelation by the Holy Spirit to benefit not just himself, but all. But wait a minute, Lou. I don't have a ministry. Yeah, you do. The Bible declares you do. You might not want to do it. And, you know, sometimes we're thinking formal ministry. And this is the problem. We got to get, look, the only reason we have 501c3s and formal ministries and all that is because men decide to tax people. And we do it to avoid taxes so we can use it for the ministry. And we, we do it because uh, there's tax benefits. But, by the way, 125, 130 years ago, you didn't have this. Before the income tax, we didn't do this stuff. No one taxed churches, and no one, and you were able to get gifts. Like if someone gave me twenty thousand dollars a minister back in nineteen hundred, I didn't have to pay income tax on it. I didn't have to report it to anybody. There was no reporting. Don't get me going on the tax code. All right, let's read this. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Hmm. Now, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ has given us that same ministry of reconciliation, that is, that God was in Christ reconciling the word to himself, not imputing their trespasses to him, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. You have a ministry. I didn't say you had a 501c3. I didn't say you had a Facebook page. I didn't say you had a domain. I didn't say you had a business card. I said you had a ministry. We've got to get back to the rawness, the rawness of the kingdom. And... And, and not have it filtered through the church. Because we're not supposed to filter things through the church. We're supposed to filter them through the Word and the Spirit. And many people filter things through the church. And not through the Scriptures. And not through the Spirit. I want to tell you a great story. Um, years ago. I was in, this is years ago. This is, two, this is the first time I went out to Bethel. It was May of 2007 jen johnson was pregnant with their oldest son and i thought she was going to give birth uh they also found out i'm sorry she was pregnant with her son and found out that day one of those days it was a, i think it was the tuesday that they were having a boy because uh their daughter walked up the middle aisle while bill was speaking and bill stopped everything and she looked up at her papa and said it's a boy and um it was special. I, I remember that. And uh, I remember a lot of things. So I got invited with 50 other pastors to go to Chris Valentin's house. And and him and Kathy are just amazing hosts. And by the way, I love them. I um, um, love Bill and Benny were there. And I was a little, but to be honest with you, I was a little, Bill had already laid hands on me at this point, and, and that's why I got invited. He invited me out there. But I, I'm a little nervous. I was a little nervous around Bill. I'm still that way because of the anointing. And I want to be very careful, okay? Um, when someone has such an anointing like that, um, my spirit, because I get hungry for it. Uh, I get that way, I got that way around Benny Hinn and other ministers. I've, I've, been, I've been blessed. I've been around T.L. Osborne and Mike Francine and all these guys to have this, and Brian Arbonke and all these guys who have this tremendous anointing. And I, and I, at this time, this is 2007, we're talking... Uh, what is that? 16 years ago. It's a long time ago. All right. But I'm talking to Chris Valentin. We're talking underneath. Um, we're at his fireplace in the house. We're talking. He's talking to me. And he's telling me stories. He tells me the story of how he stole the turkey that's over his fireplace from ben, Bill's house. Chris doesn't hunt. His wife hunts now, but Chris doesn't. And what's funny is that, you know, he said, yeah, I saw that in Bill's garage. I said, he had just built that house. He said, oh, I thought this would just be, you know, great over my fireplace. We just cracked up. But he was telling me all these stories. And he was telling me things. And we had this 45-minute conversation. It was pretty, pretty awesome to me. 
And I said to Chris, I said, you're the most apostolic prophet I've met. And, and, and I meant that, okay? It wasn't flattery. It wasn't, I wasn't moving to Bethel, folks. Um, you know, um, me and Chris have never had another conversation that length since then. It's not, it wasn't for that reason. I just was really stunned by what I could see that was on the life of Chris. And this is what Chris said to me. He said, Lou, as long as I'm with Bill, I'll be an apostolic prophet. But if I was to leave him, I'd just be a prophet. Now, I don't really agree with that. I, I Here's how I agree with that. If you left because you just didn't want to be with Bill anymore, yeah. But if you left, if you were sent out by Bill, you would still be under that anointing. It would still partner with you. If Bill said, Chris, I need you to go over there and you and Kathy move there. And if that Bill sent him out, then that would be in obedience to the spirit. Then he wouldn't lose that. Okay. And I, and I felt, I remember sitting there going, man so humble to recognize that yes where you are is because of who you're with and you're not in competition with the one you're with to try to now chris has another story when he was jealous of bill and stuff like that 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 transpired about you know i think that was in like 2000 so that was that's another story for another time listen listen to me i think a lot of you are called but you don't know what to do and I want to tell you this, be faithful in your calling without using, don't, you don't have to call yourself a prophet. You don't have to do that. And you might not be ordained in that yet. But I will tell you this, I want to honor you. And I want to tell you whether you are or not, be obedient to what the Lord is telling you. And that obedience isn't tell everyone who you are in Christ in the sense of, trying to have dominion because we're not here to have dominion over people and we don't want the praises of men we really don't want if you live by them you're going to die by their criticism so you don't want their praises you don't need everyone's approval you need gods and you need spiritual fathers who, who approve of you and by the way i have people come to my church they're ordained from someone else and i have to honor them if they've gone through a process with someone else i can't go no and I don't try to ordain everybody. I don't try to put everyone under my ministry or anything like that. I don't do that. Okay. I, I'm not a big fan of that. Like I've been a part of other groups and stuff. And I, I, I like I could have got ordained under Bethel if I wanted to. They had a program to do that. But I was ordained under Randy Leshner. And I, and I, unless the Lord tells me, um, then I can't do that. All right. Let me wrap this up real quick. We're here to serve, not to have dominion. And if we can't get this correct, we're going to be in a bad place as a church. And I want you to get this correct, of all things. Okay? So let's pray for a second, and I'm going to let you go. Father, I thank you right now. I thank you for the ministries and the gifts given to your saints. And I pray that we're not in competition, but we, ex we uh, exhort each other and lift up each other. In your mighty name, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and I'll talk to you another time. Bye-bye.